Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for July 17, 2019. I'm teaching a series entitled The Power of Fellowship. This is part 52 of the overall series, and the title of today's message is Better Together. As believers, you are great individually, all by yourself. You are anointed. You are called, appointed, and anointed for such a time as this. But guess what? We are better together. For the last few days, I've been teaching on this supernatural aspect, this spiritual thing that happens when believers get together with other believers because you, as a believer, God is in you individually. And then uh, there's another believer that's born again. God is in them individually. And so God is in them and God is in you. But when you come together, God is in you. God is in you. But when you come together, God is amongst you in a way that he is not when you're in, when you're just by yourself, right? So this spiritual thing that happens when God is in the midst, this spiritual thing that happens when two or three are gathered together in my name, this spiritual thing that happens is awesome and it's amazing. And I was teaching on that, but today I'm not going to, I'm going to take it down a notch, right? From, from this spiritual aspect to something that is more practical, something that is more pragmatic and something that's just good wisdom, right? So the Bible has wisdom literature. There are books of the Bible that are really focused on sharing the wisdom of God. One of those books is the book of Ecclesiastes. It was written by King Solomon. King Solomon is considered to be the wisest man to ever live outside of Jesus, of course. And so this is what King Solomon said about this this fellowship. Very practical wisdom. Here we go. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. I'm going to read it to you from the easy to read version. The Bible says, two people are better than one. (laughs) When two people work together, they get more work done. If one person falls the other person could reach out to help. But those who are working all by themselves, if they fall, there's nobody there to help them, right? This is just very simple. If two people sleep together, then they can be warm because they have body heat. But if one person is sleeping alone, then that person's not going to be warm. An enemy might be able to defeat one person, but two people can stand back to back and defend each other. And three people are even stronger. They are like a triple strand cord that is not easily broken. That is very hard to break. So that's just very simple. Like this is wisdom. This is wisdom literature. Very simple, but it's also profound when you start peeling it back. And so what does this mean to you today about us being better together? I have four things to share with you on this morning. Uh, This is the wisdom of God. So let's get into it. Four things for you this morning. Here we go. Number one, the wisest man to ever live. Solomon said two people are better than one. When two people work together, they get more work done, right? This seems like common sense, but uh, common sense is just often not that common, right? Um, For whatever reason, there are people who stubbornly attempt to do things on their own. Really, the reason is pride. And they struggle their way through things that could be easily accomplished if they simply ask for help. So don't let this be you. If you need help, ask for help. If you can provide the help, then provide it. You were designed to be a relational being, that you were designed to to be in relationships with other people so that you can leverage the power of relationships, leverage what God placed on other people, allow yourself to be leveraged by others as well. And when you connect with others, you can get more done. This seems like common sense, but really not everybody applies this. Number two, I've been in the information technology field, IT field for 29 years. And so for years, I've been expected to be the person with the answers, right? You know, go to Rick. He's he's the man with the answers. And so people come to me to understand very complex technology, and then they expect me to simplify the complex. And God has graced me to do it, and I'm, I'm very thankful that I get to do this, and I actually enjoy it. I love it. However, I don't know everything. <laughs> and I will never know everything, and I'm okay with that. So to do what I do, I surround myself with people that are smarter than me, and then I leverage what they know coupled with what I know because none of us is as smart as all of us. So that's the power of teams. This is what Solomon was talking about. But here's the problem. It takes a certain level of humility to acknowledge the fact that you don't know it all and that you are never going to know it all. So in my field, I've run across people who lack 
humility. And these are people who stubbornly and foolishly attempt to act like they know everything. And these people eventually fail because their lack of humility keeps them from tapping into the knowledge of other people. So please don't be like them. Humble yourself so you don't get humbled. <laughs> if you don't humble yourself, you are going to be humbled in the process. You got to acknowledge the fact that you don't know it all and that's okay. No one person does. You need other people and they need you. You can leverage them and allow yourself to be leveraged by them because God placed them in your life for a reason and you're in their life for a reason and you're better together, right? Number three, there's a freedom. This is why I teach so much about the grace of God. When you, when you embrace the grace of God, you, you know that you have faults and flaws and failures and, and you, you, you're okay with that. Not okay to the point where you're not working on it. Of course, you, you, you want to get past some of those things, but, but you don't fool yourself into thinking that you're perfect, right? So there's a freedom that comes when you embrace who you are and who you are not. See, when you know who you are, and even mo more importantly, I would say who you are not, then you're free to be you and you're free to leverage others in the areas where you're not strong. So let's say that you're strong in one area, but you also know that you have an area of weakness. And someone else is strong where you're weak, right? But they're weak where you're strong. So if you come together, watch this, you know what happens? You eliminate each other's weaknesses. That's what happened in the Old Testament with covenants. You would come together in a covenant relationship and eliminate each other's weaknesses. This seems like common sense, but unfortunately, a lot of people allow pride to keep them from acknowledging where they are weak. And if you're not humble enough to embrace who you are and who you are not, then you, you will never be in a position to leverage the grace that's on other people. And this is the power of fellowship. You, you have to be okay with who you are and acknowledge who you are not. And listen, God didn't call me to do that. God didn't grace me to do that. And so, but there are people that have the grace to do that. But if we come together, we will lack nothing. Number four, and finally, one of the greatest barriers to true fellowship is pride. If you truly want to be great, look at me. If you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you want to grow in Christ and you want to be great. So if you truly want to be great, <laughs> You have to get over yourself. You have to get over the fact that you don't know everything. You have to get over the fact that you can't do everything. You don't know it all. You can't do it all. You don't have the grace for everything. Watch this. If you're in ministry, this is something that people don't understand. If you're in ministry, you don't have the grace to minister to everybody, right? Like, I don't know why these churches, you'll see a church, a small community church, and, and, and God has given that church, the grace to minister to that community. Most churches in the United States are less than 200 members and you have to be okay with that. That's what that church was designed to do. And then you ask the, the church, the pastor, what's the vision? What's the mission of this church? To reach the world for Jesus. No, you were not designed to reach the whole world. Like you got to get over that. Like, you know, you, you don't have the grace for everybody. So everybody's not going to listen to you. <laughs> everybody's not going to come and sit up under the grace that's on your life, and you have to be you have to be okay with knowing what you are called to do, who you have the grace to reach, you know who you have the grace to connect with, because you don't have every you're not called to do everything, and you have to be okay with that, and and so just be okay with being you, and allow others to be okay with being them, and together you can leverage one another. And don't envy others. This is where you got to be able to celebrate the diversities of giftings and callings without jealousy. If you envy other people, it's terrible because two things happen. Number one, you devalue yourself. You are devaluing who God called you to be when you're envying what God placed on, some, on another person. And then if I'm envying them, then I'm never going to leverage them. So now, not only am I devaluing myself, but I'm missing out on the opportunity to embrace the grace that God placed on someone else. But when I come together, when I get over myself and I say, you know what? I need you in my life. You, God has something on you that I don't have, but God placed some stuff on me that you don't have. And if we come together, we can be better together, right? And, and so that takes a certain level of humility. And for you to walk with God, you got to be humble. You either humble yourself before the mighty hand of God or God will humble you. And, and humbling yourself is a lot better than being humbled. I've experienced both. Take it from me. So listen, leverage other people 
This is the power of fellowship. Today's message is real simple. This is not deep. This is not super spiritual. But you know what? It's necessary. We need other people. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me the importance of connecting with and leveraging others. I get over myself. I refuse to allow pride to keep me from acknowledging my weaknesses and from leveraging the people you placed in my life. I don't know everything. I was not designed to do everything on my own. I have the grace to do certain things and others are graced to do what I am not. So I leverage them and I allow them to leverage me. None of us is as smart or as strong as all of us. We are better together. And from this day forward, I will connect with others and allow them to connect with me. And together, we lack nothing. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. You get all my notes in your email inbox for free todaysword.org. Click subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I love you and God loves you. Very simple message today, but if you apply it, it will change your life. Do me a favor before you leave the screen. Come on. You know this is something other people need to hear. Share this on your social media, on your timeline with your friends right now. Have an amazing day and go connect with other people. God bless you.